Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to talk about blood typing. And there are two terms, I think, that you really need to understand in order to understand blood typing. Um, the first one is antigen. What are antigens? And the second one is antibody. What are antibodies? Um, first, antigens or antigen. An antigen is a very small particle, usually a glycoprotein or a protein, but it could be any small particle with the right shape. Um, this particle is capable of causing an immune reaction. That immune reaction usually involves the production of antibodies. Antibodies. An antibody or antibodies are little proteins made by white blood cells and those antibodies will specifically bind to a very specific antigen. So you can see the tight relationship between these two terms and if the importance of them in blood typing has not become apparent to you yet it will as we move on. Um, let me talk a little bit more about antibodies. There are different forms and shapes of antibodies but they all have this one major shape and that is this kind of Y shape to them um, that looks something like this. And then the other thing I should probably put on here, the ends of this little Y shape here are special. These are the antigen binding sites. They're also called variable regions. Within your own body, you make millions of different kinds of these little antibodies. And each of those millions has a specific structure to its variable region that causes that particular type of antibody to bind only to one antigen, or maybe a couple, but there's, bit, there's a huge specificity of the particular structure that this will bind to. And that's how antibodies attack aliens. They bind specifically to that alien, um, and cause it a bad day. They either bind and clump um, or they bind and by binding to it and covering it that flags that alien for destruction by other parts of the immune system, etc. Another thing you might notice with these two terms is it's kind of an introduction to the immune system but very important to understanding blood typing. Let's talk about antigen antibody reaction Remember that little Y shape. I'm going to simplify it when I draw this, um, but we'll go ahead and put up some red blood cells here. So here's a red blood cell and another red blood cell. And let's say this is alien blood that's been put into somebody else's body, and unfortunately the person has antibodies against it. So here's my little antibodies represented by this little Y. And um, here's the alien antigens that the person has on the surface of their red blood cells. What's going to happen is that the person whose body this blood was introduced into is going to have antibodies against these alien antigens and you're going to see the antibodies bind to these antigens. So there's my little Y shape binding to that antigen. And here's another one binding there. Wherever we find antigen here, we'll have little antibodies bound to them. That tags these red blood cells for destruction, and that's going to give this person a bad day. But another thing, let me draw another red blood cell over here. You can imagine Notice that those antibodies have two binding sites. So an antibody might be bound here to this antigen on this red blood cell and then also bound to this other one. And I could do the same thing again over here. If I move this antibody around a little bit, there's an antibody that's binding those cells together. That causes these cells to clump up. When cells are caused to clump up like this by antibodies, in other words, the presence of an antibody is what causes this clumping of cells, we call that agglutination. I 
And that's the third very important term for understanding blood typing is agglutination, the clumping of cells due to the presence of an antibody. So there's our third major term, and notice that that's three terms that you should really understand to really understand blood typing. What is an antigen? A small particle, usually a protein or glycoprotein, that is capable of stimulating an immune response that our body recognizes as aliens and then makes antibodies against. What is an antibody? Again, an antibody, these are little tiny proteins made by white blood cells that specifically bind to particular antigens. And then what is agglutination? Agglutination is the clumping of cells caused by the presence of an antibody. Those are the three major terms. Let's talk about the blood typing card and we'll use those terms and that should help us understand blood typing in general. A blood typing card will contain four circles. The first one is usually called the anti-A circle. Whoops. Anti-A. The next circle is called anti-B. Third circle is anti-D. Um, and this one represents RH. And then there'll be a fourth circle, which is the control. In the lab, when we, when we get these cards, they actually have a little bit of dried stuff in here. And here's what's in that dried stuff, little antibodies. There's other stuff in there too, but there's little antibodies. These particular antibodies in the anti-A circle are antibodies against A. So there's antibodies against A. And then over here in the B circle, what do you think is going to be here? Antibodies against the B antigen. And then in the D circle, the anti-D circle, there's going to be antibodies against RH. And then in the control circle, there will be some stuff in there, but there shouldn't be any antibodies. And let's talk about what happens when we put blood in here with the antibodies. If the person's red blood cells have A antigens on their surface, and I could represent that by drawing a little cell. There's my red blood cell. And let's say that this person's blood has A antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. And let's say for this one, let's just say that's all they have on the surface of their red blood cells. So they just have A. One thing that this means um, in terms of the name of their blood type, by the way, is that this is A negative blood. They have A antigens, that makes them type A. Um, and they have no RH antigens, that makes them negative, A negative. So what would happen if I took this blood sample and put it on the circles of the blood card? In the A circle, the anti-A circle, because there are antibodies against A antigen, I should see agglutination here. I should see those anti-A antibodies causing the red blood cells of this person's blood to clump up. That's agglutination. I should see agglutination here. When I put a blood sample into the B circle, the anti-B circle, I should not see agglutination because there's no B antigens on this person's red blood cells. So the anti-B antibodies in the circle wouldn't have anything to react with. Um, so I wouldn't see agglutination here. The same is true for the anti-D circle or the RH circle. I should not see agglutination there. Again, before we put the blood here, there were antibodies against RH here. This person doesn't have RH. So those antibodies won't have anything to react to. They won't react to this blood, so no agglutination there. And then lastly, for any blood type, any collection of blood type antigens, I shouldn't see agglutination in the control circle. If I do see agglutination here, that means that there's a problem with the test, either a problem in the manufacturing of the, of the card used for the test, um, or a cross-contamination when I applied the samples. Let's do another blood type just for fun. Um, how about instead of A, let's do 
our H. And let's do RH only. So what should happen in these circles with RH only? And feel free to pause the video and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Um, and then watch me go through it maybe. So here, here's the answer. If When I apply these red blood cells to the anti-A circle, again, this circle has antibodies against A, there's no A to react with on this person's red blood cells, so I should see no reaction, no agglutination. When I apply these red blood cells to the anti-B circle, remember that this circle, before we added the blood, contained antibodies against B antigen, but there's no B antigens on this person's red blood cells, so I shouldn't see agglutination here, no reaction here. These two circles together, by the way, if we see no reaction, that means that the person is type O. Type O means a lack of A and B. That's all that it means. No A, no B, that's type O. Lastly, if I put this person's red blood cells into the anti-D circle, the RH circle, I will see agglutination, or I should see agglutination. That tells me, of course, the reason I see agglutination here is because in the circle before we applied the blood, there were antibodies against RH. Those antibodies against RH will react with the antigens of RH on the surface of this person's red blood cells, and we will see agglutination, a clumping of those red blood cells in this circle. And then we could mention the control again. We shouldn't see agglutination in there at all because there are no antibodies. If there is agglutination, then something went wrong, and the test has to be thrown out and can't be used. That is blood typing in a nutshell. Um, as always, if there are any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And thank you once again for watching.